Sermon of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I on 10th Dominica after Pentecost, 28 July, 2024 Anno Domini. Commemoration of the Feast of St. Nazarius and St. Celsus, Martyrs, and the Feast of St. Victor I, Pope, Martyr and Feast of St. Innocent I, Pope, Confessor. Today is the 10th Dominica of Pentecost. The epistle is taken from uh, the epistle of St. Paul, the, the first epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to Corinthians, chapter 12. Brethren, you know that when you were heathen, you went to dumb idols, according as you were led. Therefore, I do you to understand that no man speaking in the Spirit of God saith anathema to Jesus. And no man can say, Our Lord Jesus, but in the Holy Ghost. And there are divisions of graces, but one Spirit. And there are divisions of ministrations, but one Lord. And there are divisions of operations, but one God, which worketh all in all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given unto every one to profit. The one certes by the Spirit is given the word of wisdom and to another the word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith, say it, to another faith in the same Spirit, to another the grace of doing cures in one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of languages, and all these things work at one and the same Spirit, dividing to everyone according as He will. Please stand for today's Gospel. Which is taken from Gospel of St. Luke chapter 18. At that time, Jesus said also in certain that trusted in themselves as just and despised others. This parable. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee standing prayed thus with himself, God, I give thee thanks that I am not as the rest of men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, as also this publican. I fast twice in a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not so much as lift up his eyes toward heaven, and he knocked his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I say to you, this man went down into his house justified more than he because everyone that exalted himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That's part of the words of today's gospel. Be seated. Everyone that exalted himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. In nomine Patris, Spiritus, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. What a lesson it is today in today's Gospel, and that's a lesson of the Catholic faith as it is, because it leads to all that is essential for a soul to progress in the sanctification and to be pleasing to God. And what is that word? What is that term? What is that it is which, which is essential? That is humility and leaving off the human pride and discarding it and destroying it in yourself. That's the essential part of Catholic faith because it says in another place, God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Because as our Lord states in another place, or St. Paul rather quotes him saying, what hast thou that thou hast not received? Meaning, 
What do you have that is, has not come from the hand of God? And also when our Lord says himself that what without me, without me you can do nothing. Meaning that without the grace of God we are incapable of producing good things. Only in a natural way in the sense of our knowledge, but then they are incomplete. So in front of God, they are just human. They don't merit what their otherwise would be meriting. If they were done by the grace of God and fullness of belief and being truly Catholic. God is not pleased with those who are his enemies. God is not pleased with those who claim to be Catholic and neglect to learn what it is. God is not pleased with those who, blindly as they are, blind as they are, and deaf to the truth, reject his vicar, reject all that the church has always taught, and just continue going to places where the heresies are proclaimed and disseminated by the servants of Satan, by the heretics. But that's the consequence of sin, of pride, and inability, therefore, of seeing the truth. God leaves them to their blindness, and being deaf to the truth, and they are incapable of recovery, and they are incapable of conversion. Because that's conversion from heresy, it's a truly supernatural divine gift of God. And so they are being humbled by their own inability to recognize the truth. St. Thomas Aquinas, doctor of the church, the angel doctor, states in another place that it is impossible to discern the truth without being in a state of sanctifying grace of your soul. And why is it so? Because God will not, God who is the truth essentially is not giving the grace of the, the spirit of understanding is not with those who don't wish to obtain it, who want to co continue offending God in their unbelief, in their profession of heresies and apostasy and infidelity and so forth. And that's what the lesson of today's gospel is. The humility must be then, therefore, as a precondition of the soul obtaining anything from God, because otherwise God will not grant anything. The soul elevates herself into the state of heights of declaring as the devil, who is the master of all evils and all lies, has done to himself before he perverted himself. That's how he lost the favor of God and was thrown out of heaven because of his pride. And so those who are sinners, horrible sinners, heretics, infidels, apostates, they imitate their master devil in their sin. They follow his example in their pride. That's how bad the situation is. And it is so widespread today. It is truly the general apostasy that is foretold and including the non-Catholic sect called Novus Odo, the abomination, the example, the joy, the, the fulfillment of the abomination of desolation that our Lord warned us about, citing Prophet Daniel and so forth. That is truly the, the, the case today. And how important is therefore for one to be truly Catholic is self-explanatory, it's self-evident. Because otherwise the devil takes over the soul and the soul is the slave of the devil. And then there's no recovery possible without the help of God. To teach the soul a lesson, which in many cases will be eternal lesson forever in hell. But so be it for those who are obstinately refusing to, us, to accept the truth and to follow in holy obedience what the church has always taught. The Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church which is, of course, not the heretics and apostate sectarians of the Novus Ordo. That's not the Catholic Church. Because of by virtue of the faith, which is nothing else, the revealed faith is nothing else but Catholic tradition, they have forbidden it. They don't wish to be Catholic. So then, yes, it is so that in their pride, they denying God himself as they deny his truth, what he has revealed about himself, what is called 
divine deposit of faith, which the church has always taught and transmits ever since the apostles faithfully and properly safeguards. And therefore the papal offices was set up by God himself, by Christ our Lord, to do the same, to do exactly this, protect the faith of salvation, so that the doctrine of salvation is vested, it is truly the protection of the doctrine of salvation is vested with the guidance of the Holy Ghost to the tri true and rightful sovereign pontiff, which at present is our person, unworthy as we are of that office, and we admit that wholeheartedly, and we have never asked for it and never desired it, never even thought that that's the case. But that we have obtained it is the will of God, we must obey it, we have no other choice. And so we cannot deny it because that would be sinful conduct and sacrilege in front of God. And those who don't believe us, we pity them because then they are blind. Unfortunately, but we wish to help them to recover themselves from the yoke of Satan by whom they are held at his will. But that they have to make that first step. They have to recognize that they are being had by the henchmen of Satan, by the heretics, and that there is no possibility of them being able to save their soul. And of course the human pride plays a role in it because then they are obstinately refusing to recognize the truth. And God is not helping them in it because he sees that they will not build upon it. They will not be the good trees bearing good fruit. Otherwise he would help them to do so. And they will be willing to help the church to continue her mission of salvation of souls out of charity for their fellow man so that others could convert and amend and God can have mercy on them and they become true Catholic. So that's the situation today, and that's caused by human pride. Among other things, by human pride, which is described by Christ our Lord in, our, in today's Gospel. So that when the publican is standing there realizing his own sin, not worthiness to even be there, knocks at his breast and says, God be merciful to me, a sinner, he acknowledges his own, his own unworthiness and truly incapable in incapability, inability to, to recover himself, he asked for mercy of God. On the other hand, the, the self-elevation of the Pharisee, the haughtiness of his pride as it is, God, I give thee thanks. You give thanks to God, but then he uh, elevates himself by his own judgment to that level which is described in today's gospel. So he passes judgment on those who are sinners, and says in his own mind that he is not one of them, he is therefore not a sinner. He gives thanks to God, but then he passes judgment of his own, upon his own person. In self-elevation and pride. And then, that's how the Lord sees and, and teaches that, so that what we have to avoid being like this, that's the lesson of today's gospel. Not to think, not to be high-minded in our own eyes, not to be elevated, self-elevated in what we have obtained from God and what does not belong to us in the first place, that is gratuitous gift, supernatural gift of God, gift of grace, gift of mercy from Christ our Lord, from God himself to ours, to, to, to otherwise people or souls that will be burning in hell that we must lower ourselves beyond us as little beggars, asking God for mercy and help. For that, God instituted the holy sacrifice of the Mass as a propitiation for our sins, as a sacrifice to God. It's not only a sacrifice of praise, it's truly the sacrifice, and reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary. That's how important the Mass is. And of course, the heretics, they don't have the valid Mass, because in their pride, they claim to be wise, and they profess something that God has not revealed and his church has never taught, which means heresy. That's how they become enemies of God, and God allows them to fall into these evils and vices, among which the pride is one of the worst ones, because that's the sin of the devil. And of course the devil couldn't be happier about such help. 
from such enemies of God because then they are perverting others by their, by their evil example, a scandal's example, and by their heresies which the devil supplies them with in abundance. And the fraudulent, but to some blind souls accommodating approaches, but they nevertheless lead to hell, nowhere else. So in their eloquence, niceness of approach towards those who are blind and deaf to the truth and go to such assemblies of heretics, although the church has condemned them, and we have condemned them several times in our publications. They continue offending God, nothing else. They are not absolved of their sins because heretics cannot absolve. They get angry when they are rebuked by this Holy See for that conduct. And when they observe what we publish, and then they pass judgment of what we publish because they imitate the Pharisee in today's gospel who passed judgment on the publican instead of watching himself and seeing whether he is wanting in many things which he was evidently in so in that proclamation he made because that only angers God. A striking example, for example, in the Old Testament is the friends of Job who tormented the poor soul and instead of realizing that they themselves are guilty of several things and passed judgment on his soul, calling him a sinner that you have sinned, that's why God visited you with these misfortunes. At the end, they had to learn from God himself that that's not so. That it was a trial and a test of faith of Job and his patience. And that's what, human taste, that's what the human soul is visited with by God. Those are trials, tests of the faith, how much the, the soul is willing to serve our Lord, how much he is willing to suffer and carry the daily crosses which are the, the sources of merit in front of God and the impatience, humility, being truly Catholic, learning the faith and being helpful to his church, of the Lord's church. But those who neglect or those who reject this truth, God leaves them to become us, the Pharisee, and worse. And so, when the publican showed his humility, our Lord says so. He says that he was justified going down, went down into his house justified more than the Pharisee, evidently. Because the pride was not there, but humility, calling himself a sinner, not deserving anything but asking for mercy of God only. And that's what all those who strive to be true Catholic must do. Because otherwise, if they elevate themselves to proclaim what they believe and what they not believe and what they are required or not required to believe in front of God, and how much obedience they are given or willing to give to the Church, the God instituted, the divine institution of the Catholic Church, and to his rightful vicar, our present our person in the present at the present time how much obedience there is and how much there is not, and how much they are willing to do for the church and not. In that case, they're establishing their own limitations, their own rules of conduct, their own faith, their own rules, and therefore they become their own sect. And they are not part of the church. And probably never become part of the church. Why? Because the devil owns their soul and lures them to perdition in hell. But that's the consequence of sin, and among which is the greatest of them, or one of the greatest, is the sin of pride. And that's what our Lord condemns in today's Gospel. And therefore we admonish such souls that still striving to become truly Catholic, to do more and to learn the truth from us, and to obey the Church, to leave those assemblies that we have exposed in our publications so many times and condemned their conduct and condemned them with our empowered doctrine and 
supreme teaching authority of the sovereign pontiff because otherwise those falsehoods and false doctrines that these heretics ex the, disseminate and apostate sectarians, these inventions which they obtain from their master the devil, the devil in himself is supplying it to them and thus they are incapable of recovery. They are his servants. They hate the church, they hate the truth, they don't wish to save, help self, save souls and thus they are most useful servants of Satan and also goes to such places they are imitating the Pharisee in today's gospel one way or another in their pride and they will not be able to save their soul on the other hand when they admit that they were not Catholic and that they want to be Catholic and wait for the church to teach them and to help them which they don't even realize that's not only the doctrine itself, but that supernatural grace of the sacraments that does the work in the soul. And by that, if they go to heretics, they will not obtain it. That's what they're missing, thor thoroughly missing. That is essential. They leaving off the supernatural part that is so much more important for the soul, for the state of the soul than the doctrine itself, although doctrine is important also in, in uh, elevating the belief and the, the intellect and in one way or another even the will of the soul, but that the supernatural of the sacrament, the grace itself, is the most essential because the grace of God cleanses the soul of sins and sacrament of penance, and that has to be valid, and elevates the soul to God with God in the true holy sacrifice of the Mass, in the Holy Communion. Of course, those who are outside the church, they cannot enter. They cannot participate. And they are not pleasing to God. And so, the choice is theirs. They have free will. God leaves them to it. He has the consequences. And of course, his consequences, at the end, are eternal. Either heaven or hell and most of the people choose today to be with the Pharisee as is recorded in today's gospel they claim to be wise they proclaim that they are Catholic and at the end they are not and they blame all others including in that or in their prideful audacity they are willing to ex attack the Holy See and the right to so pontiff because they don't believe that that's the case. And how could they believe if God is not revealing to them because they are heretics or apostate sectarians and therefore his enemies. They go that far that they are able to recognize an apostate sectarian person who is not so much as a valid priest. He is a layman with communist connections and just because he dresses in white cassock and occupies the place that has never been his to occupy the Vatican, they are willing to accept him. Even though he's a scandalous apostate person who does not have the Catholic faith. And that is not the Catholic Church, this horrible sect, apostate sect of Satan, called Novus Ordo. For some decades, that is. And in humility, which is required for those who strive to be true Catholic, they have to reject that sect completely, never listen to what they, what they publish, what the sect is publishing, and also defend this sect, and strive after perfection in front of God and becoming true Catholic. In that case, the Church will help by her sacraments, and God will most certainly help their conversion. Otherwise, they will be lost and join the ranks of the millions and millions of souls who too wanted to be Catholic they said so and at the end they didn't take care what they believed and where they went for the so-called sacraments and committed sacrilege every time they show up in such desecrated places calling it Catholic 
and they were not Catholic. And they paying for it if they die in such a state of their soul to God in hell forever. But those who want to be truly Catholic, they will see the difference when they see it and obtain it from God, their conversion. And in becoming Catholic, they will leave the imitation, their imitation of the Pharisee as it, as it is recorded in today's Gospel, and will join the ranks of the humble publican, admitting that they were not worthy of anything, but that they are grateful to God that they hope, have obtained their, His mercy, con confessing themselves to be horrible sinners and begging for mercy of God at the hands of His Church in valid abjuration of heresy and abjuration of all these evils and valid confessions and so forth. Which God in that case will, grant, uh, will most certainly grant because He wants them to be saved so they can praise him and adore him for all eternity in heaven. In order of the Father, Jesus Christ, Sancti. Amen. Benedictio Dei Omnipotenti, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus, descendat superbo, et manat semper. Amen.